Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell has not done many interviews this year, but he invited us to Capitol Hill Friday to talk about President Biden's request to Congress for more than $100 billion in aid for Ukraine, Israel, and U.S. border security. And that's where our conversation began. We have big power competition from China, from Russia, and we still have terrorism problems as the Israelis have certainly experienced in a brutal way in the last week. Mm -hmm. So I think it requires a worldwide approach rather than trying to take parts of it out. It's all connected. The Chinese and the Russians said they're now friends forever. Iranian mm -hmm. drones are being used in Ukraine and against the Israelis. There's resistance among some Republicans, including here in the Senate, about bundling things together. Is it possible to pass Ukraine aid if it's not tied to Israel? I just think that's a mistake. I, I, I mean, I know there are some Republicans in the Senate and maybe more in the House that mm -hmm. think U Ukraine is somehow different. I view it as all interconnected. And you've said that you believe there is enough oversight of aid to Ukraine. Why hasn't that persuaded some members of the, of the Republican caucus? If you look at the Ukraine assistance, let's, let's talk about where the money's really going. A significant portion of it's being spent in the United States in 38 different states, replacing the weapons that we sent to Ukraine with more modern weapons. So we're rebuilding our industrial base that's what President Biden's seeking to do. It's, it's correct. No Americans are getting killed in Ukraine. We're re rebuilding our industrial base. Uh, the Ukrainians are destroying the army of one of our biggest rivals. I have a hard time finding anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful that they're defending themselves. And also the notion that the Europeans are not doing enough They've done almost $90 billion. They're housing a bunch of refugees who escaped. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, our NATO allies in Europe have done quite a lot. You sound like you have a lot in common with President Biden in his worldview, based on what you just laid out. Well, not on the domestic side, <laughs> but on, on this issue that we were discussing today, we're generally in the same place. On the issue of Israel, that does seem to be uh, a unifying issue for many Republicans. Um, and I want to ask you about this $10 billion request the president is making. Do you think there need to be any provisions in there uh, that would account for the risk of human rights, human rights violations uh, in Gaza? Well, we want to make sure we're not sending money to Hamas, I can tell you that. But there are genuine humanitarian needs mm -hmm. uh, for the people in Gaza who are not Hamas, uh, who've been thrown under the bus by what Hamas did, innocent people. But we, we want to be careful about how the money is spent, be sure it actually gets where it's supposed to get. For any military aid that's going to Israel right now, do you think there needs to be need to be strings attached? Israel's our strongest ally in the world. Uh, we trust them, and we have a very tight relationship with them, both on an intelligence side and the military side. So I, I, I don't think the kind of oversight we're talking about for Ukraine, for example, would be necessary for Israel. You know, to do all of these things, you need a partner in Congress. Uh, Senator Welch said you are the only Republican negotiator right now because of all the disarray in the House. How can you deliver on this at a time when you're saying it's essential? Well, I hope we're going to have a speaker sometime soon. And we... Before we, November 17th? We, we need funding? one. We need one because the House can't do anything without a speaker. And um, it, it's a... It's a problem, but I hope it's going to get solved pretty quickly. Is there anyone in the House who can lead the Republicans? Look, I, I'm not an expert on the House. I have my hands full here in the Senate, and uh, we're going to do our job and hope the House can get functional here sometime soon. There is no current U.S. ambassador to Israel right now. Um, and some of your Republican colleagues have voiced concerns about President Biden's nominee. Do you have concerns about Jack Lew? 
uh, he is a very controversial nominee because of his relationship with the Iran nuclear deal, which was opposed by everybody in my party. And uh, by the way, the, I hope that flirtation with Iran is finally over with regard to the nuclear deal. And Senator Cotton and I also have a bill to freeze the $6 billion that was on the way to the Iranians in relation to the hostage release. Well, so, it's in Qatar, and the White House says Iran hasn't been able to make any withdrawals from it. Yeah, but we'd like to make it law so that it can't be undone. Look, I think we need to get tougher with Iran, and I do think the weakness of both the Obama administration and the Biden administration is the thought that somehow we could do business with Iran on something. And I think it's pretty clear we can't. I mean, they're funding Hezbollah, Hamas, creating problems all over the Middle East, and uh, we shouldn't be doing any business with them. President Biden said he's going to hold Iran accountable. What yeah, do you think well, that means? I, I think the proof will be what are we going to do to hold them accountable? And uh, that's, it's got to be credible. You, ca you can't, on the one hand, be negotiating with Iran on some kind of nuclear deal that you know they won't keep, and then turn around and uh, de declare that you're going to get tougher with Iran. I think, number one, uh, quit talking to the Iranians about any kind of nuclear deal. Number two, don't give them the $6 billion. And number three, back up the Israelis in every conceivable way after this attack by Iran-sponsored Hamas. You, de you oppose all diplomacy with Iran? It's not a question of mm -hmm. whether you ever talk to them or not, but it's a question of what, what do you do? What do you do? And clearly, the nuclear deal that the Obama administration agreed to and that the Biden administration tried to reconnect mm -hmm. uh, is, is not the way to go. There's an axis of evil in the world, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. And we need to stand up to the axis of evil, not try to do business with them. I want to ask you as well about the moment here in Washington that we are in. A number of members of Congress, including Representatives Miller Meeks, Ferguson, Bacon, Ken Buck, have said just this week that they have had death threats against them. How concerned are you about violence against lawmakers working here? Well, I, I think there have been more threats lately, and I am concerned about it. Are you concerned about more political violence going into an election year here? Look, uh, I think since 9-11 the, the, uh, and, and January 6th, we've had heightened security here at the Capitol. I'm sure we're a target for all kinds of evildoers, both in the United States and abroad. People wonder about your health. How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm completely recovered and uh, just fine. Uh, you and your office felt the need to, to share and disclose some of the details about your health because of some of these public incidents. And the doctor here said there was no evidence of Parkinson's disease or a stroke or, or a seizure. Um, and I wonder, is there anything the public should know that wasn't disclosed? Uh, I'm in good shape, completely recovered, and back on the job. So does that mean that you think you are able to continue serving and you want to continue serving here at a time when we are talking about incredible dysfunction in Washington? I think we ought to be talking about what we were talking about earlier rather than my health. You've made clear you have a lot of policy disagreements with the former president, Donald Trump. Doesn't it trouble you that he is the front runner for the Republican nomination, given the questions he has raised about aid for Ukraine, for example. I'm not gonna comment on the various candidates for president on either side. I've got my hands full here in the Senate. Uh, former Secretary of Defense Gates told us this is one of the most dangerous moments that he has ever seen for our country. 
And we're talking about the basic functioning of our democracy being a problem right now. Um, I'll, I'll ask you again, who can lead the Republican Party, not just in the House, but to deliver on the vision that you are laying out here? Typically, it's the candidate for president when you have a presidential election who becomes obviously the most visible person in your party. And we don't know who that's going to be yet. In the meantime, we have divided government. We have a job to do. The election's not until next year. Dabbling in the presidential election is something I'm just not going to do. I don't think it's productive. More of our interview with Republican leader McConnell will air on our CBS News streaming politics program, America Decides, tomorrow at 5 p.m.